Welcome to a Legendarium special about Johann Friedrich Botger and the surprising discovery of the last alchemist. In this episode, we will talk about how a boastful young man got the worst kind of attention by claiming he could turn lead into gold, but he wound up creating something much more valuable and more practical. Born in 1682, Johann Friedrich Botger was the son of the mint keeper in Schleiss. When young Johann's father lost his job, the family moved to the town of Magdeburg to share quarters with Johann's uncle, a prosperous goldsmith. After his father's death, Johann again proved fortunate in his family, for his stepfather, a well-to-do engineer, gave young Johann an outstanding education. During these early years, Johann became a renowned kiln builder and helped to pay for his apprenticeship to an apothecary in Berlin. Here, the ambitious teenager demonstrated a skill for experiment and a habit of ignoring the rules. He met several men engaged in the alchemical search for the Philosopher's Stone. Supposedly, this mineral compound could be combined with base metals like lead to create gold. Botger, too, became obsessed with this centuries-old quest, and after receiving some ingredients and instructions from a wandering Greek monk, this swaggering youth made a fateful boast and claimed that he could transform lead into gold. It seems that Botger's demonstrations proved convincing enough for rumors to begin spreading. In 1701, these rumors reached the ears of the Prussian elector, soon to become King Frederick I in Prussia. Elector Frederick wanted to employ an alchemist to help him make more gold to finance his lavish tastes, his army, and his debts. Thus, Frederick commanded Botger report to him in Berlin. Fearful he would be punished for making false boasts, Botker abandoned his apprenticeship and made a dash for the border. This put him beyond the long arm of the Prussian elector, but delivered him into the clutches of Saxony's elector, Augustus the Strong. Augustus also needed gold to keep his sizable self upon the Polish throne. To prevent the young alchemist from being kidnapped by Prussian soldiers or from running away, King Augustus locked Botger into a Saxon prison. The prisoner received comfortable accommodations and also enjoyed materials, books, and lavish meals. Botger even entertained many of the state's leading scholars. Yet the Saxon elector still impatiently awaited news that his real-life Rumpelstiltskin could turn lead into gold. Making gold, it turned out, required steep initial investments, and by 1703 Augustus had already plunged 40,000 thaler into Botger, enough to pay a year's wages for 4,000 men. Perhaps that is why they did not call him Augustus the Wise. Nonetheless, Botger soon left his gilded cage for the fittingly named Goldhaas, a fully equipped alchemist's laboratory in the Electoral Palace of Dresden. Here, Botger had access to the latest equipment, a fully stocked library, and skilled craftsmen to assist him. His apartments in the palace included space for a billiards room, and Botger enjoyed the freedom to walk around in the palace gardens, although if he neared the gate, his guards had orders to shoot pellets at him from a blowpipe. And if he did not produce gold for Augustus soon, those pellets might be replaced with real bullets. However, an older scholar named Walter von Tierhaus saved Botger from execution for fraud against the elector. A skilled mathematician and chemist, the Silesian-born Tierhaus had studied medicine, mineralogy, chemistry, and philosophy at the University of Leiden. 
Over his travels, Tierhaus made intensive studies of burning mirrors, which enabled the melting and assaying of materials at high temperatures. Like the leading scientists of the day, Tierhaus took an interest in alchemy, but he prioritized the practical goal of improving sex in industries such as marble polishing and glass blowing. By 1694, Tierhaus used his burning lenses to melt delftware and Chinese porcelain in pursuit of the original recipe. Chinese porcelain, white and semi-translucent, always created a sensation and fetched astronomical prices whenever it came to Europe. If a European could find a way to reverse engineer porcelain, it would allow Europeans to take over this market and create a brand new industry. In 1702, Tierhaus learned about French experiments with mixtures of eggshells, snail shells, and chalk. Tierhaus himself pioneered a process to fuse chalk and quartz, and he proved unhappy to leave aside his main project when Augustus tasked him with speeding up Botker's research. Yet assisting Botker gave Tierhaus the chance to explore high-temperature firing in a first-rate laboratory. In May 1706, the unlikely duo succeeded in turning out a hard red ceramic paste that resembled the red porcelains already in Augustus's collection. Tierhaus likely recognized that the recipe for the much-desired white porcelain lay within reach. Thus, he persuaded both Botker and the Elector to pursue this more probable concoction while putting the longer-term project of the Philosopher's Stone on the back burner. In 1707, the Botker team devoted itself to perfecting the vitrified red stoneware that would later be known as Botger Stoneware. The team lost its strongest member when Tierhaus died on October 11, 1708, from dysentery. In March 1709, Botger became confident enough to announce to the king that he was able to make porcelain as good as that of the Chinese. Yet this remained a premature boast. Only in 1713 could the Saxons reliably fire white porcelains, and it took longer still to perfect the glazes. Augustus moved Botger and his operations to the old Wetton Castle in Meissen, about 15 miles from Dresden, where production could begin in earnest and in secret. There, Botger built a kiln and set up a horse mill to grind paste and glaze materials. A master silversmith oversaw the artistic side of production and soon added pieces modeled on Baroque silver. Botger also secured exclusive rights to the all-important kaolin clay from Ow, sent in boxes marked with crossed swords and the letters A.R. for Augustus Rex. By 1711, the Meissen works employed 30 men and produced 12,000 pieces ready for sale, only half of which actually found buyers at local fairs. However, Botger would not live to see this budding industry flourish. From 1715 to his death in 1719, Botger increasingly descended into alcoholism. Still watched by Augustus's men, Botger worked on blue underglaze paintings and put gold and silver decorations onto vessels. Augustus the Strong imagined that these would be part of what he called his Japanese palace. He imagined it including 18 lavish rooms. Its lower level would would be wallpapered with thousands of imported Asian porcelains and the upper plastered in Meissen products, showing them to be equal if not superior. One room would be completely celadon in gold, the next purple in gold, the others gray and blue. Augustus's porcelain menagerie of life-sized birds and animals would reside on the top floor, of course. This grand dream would not come to pass, for poisoned by drink and the toxic substances of his trade, Botker died in March 1719. 
Never a wise man with money, at the time of his death, Botker owed 8,564 thaler in personal debt. His manufactory had outstanding debts of nearly three times that amount, not including back wages owed to his workers. Yet his remarkable legacy remains in the European porcelain, which remains a wealthy and important industry to this day. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.